Welcome to our International Student Brief Program. Today, we have some fascinating stories lined up for you. First, we delve into the lives of Ukraine's elite fighters, who have transitioned from rescuing people in Kabul to defending their homeland against Russian forces. As the war drags on, these soldiers are facing exhaustion and uncertainty about the future, especially with concerns over dwindling Western support. Next, we celebrate the achievements of Taunton High School's top graduates of 2024. These exceptional students have excelled in academics and extracurricular activities, earning spots at prestigious universities. Finally, we explore the booming world of women's soccer, where record transfer fees and increased international opportunities are paving the way for a brighter future for female athletes. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories. The Globe and Mail, in a gripping account of Ukraine's ongoing conflict, foreign correspondent Mark McKinnon takes us to the front lines, where he meets the elite fighters defending their homeland. One memorable encounter involves Shaman, the leader of a feared Ukrainian battalion, who shares his thoughts from an old laundry room near Kiev. Shaman's battalion has a storied history, having rescued civilians from Kabul just before the Taliban takeover. As the war with Russia drags on, the initial optimism among Ukrainian soldiers has given way to exhaustion and uncertainty, especially with their heavy reliance on Western military support. The soldiers now face the daunting question of how long they can hold out, with the November elections in the U.S. adding to their anxiety about future aid. Yahoo U.S., Taunton High School's top graduates of 2024 are an impressive group of young scholars and athletes. Valedictorian Jenna Pereira, heading to Harvard University, excelled in advanced placement courses and led numerous school organizations. Salutatorian Sarah Mendonca, bound for Providence College, was a standout in both academics and athletics, particularly in track and cross-country. Other top graduates include Devlin Madden, who will attend Williams College as a first-generation college student, and Braylon Nichols, who overcame multiple knee surgeries to excel in sports and academics, and will attend Amherst College. These students have demonstrated remarkable dedication and resilience, achieving high honors and contributing significantly to their school and community. Associated Press, the global rise of women's soccer is evident in the increasing international transfers and the substantial fees clubs are paying for top players. This year, Bay FC set a record with a $788,000 transfer fee for Zambian forward Rachel Kundananji, while Orlando Pride acquired Barbara Banda for $740,000. The National Women's Soccer League, NWSL, has expanded its international roster spots, reflecting the growing movement of players across borders. The surge in transfers, driven by greater investment and high-profile tournaments like the Women's World Cup, underscores the expanding opportunities for female athletes. The NWSL, now in its 12th season, boasts significant sponsorships and a lucrative media rights deal, while leagues abroad, like the Women's Super League, have also seen substantial growth since becoming fully professionalized. This trend highlights the increasing options and financial rewards available to women in soccer, both in the U.S. and globally. South China Morning Post, in 2011, Matthew, a junior official in one of China's powerful finance ministries, enjoyed a two-week honeymoon in Maui, Hawaii, promising his new wife to travel abroad annually. However, a decade later, Matthew and millions of others in China's state-funded organizations find themselves under stringent travel restrictions. As officials rise in rank, their travel freedoms diminish due to concerns over corruption, state secrets, and foreign espionage. These restrictions have tightened significantly in recent years, even as China seeks to re-engage globally post-COVID-19. Experts warn that limiting international travel for such a large and influential group could stifle information flow and broaden perspectives, ultimately impacting China's policy execution and international relations. Guardian, stag dose, often seen as a final hurrah for grooms-to-be, frequently devolve into chaotic, boost-fueled escapades, especially when held abroad. British men, in particular, seem to embrace a collective mentality of exaggerated laddishness, driven by peer pressure and the freedom from familial responsibilities. This often leads to outrageous behavior, such as brawls and reckless antics. The financial burden of these events can be significant, with some running up four-figure bills. Despite the potential for camaraderie, stag dose are more likely to result in drunken debauchery and strained relationships, contrasting with the more meaningful connections often formed during hen dose. Nikkei Asia, Japanese, cat lit, has become a global phenomenon, with beautifully illustrated covers and heartwarming stories captivating readers worldwide. This trend, which gained momentum in the mid-2010s, has roots in Japan's long literary tradition of celebrating cats, dating back to the 9th century. 
Notable works like Natsum Soseki's I Am a Cat and modern hits like Takashi Hyrade's The Guest Cat have paved the way for this genre's international success. Publishers attribute the popularity to the visual appeal of cat covers on social media and the soothing, healing nature of these stories. However, as the market becomes saturated, there are concerns that the focus on cat books may overshadow other significant works in Japanese literature. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that Australian universities are facing a potential loss of 4,500 jobs due to a $500 million budget shortfall caused by the government's crackdown on international students. Universities Australia's CEO, Luke Sheehy, criticizes both major political parties for their unified stance on limiting international student numbers, which he claims is unjustly linked to the housing crisis. Sheehy argues that international students are being scapegoated and that the sector, which significantly contributes to the economy, should receive the same bipartisan support as the mining industry. The legislative changes proposed could severely impact universities' financial stability, leading to cuts in campus infrastructure, research, and jobs, and potentially affecting tourism and other sectors. In another piece from the Sydney Morning Herald, the treatment of international students in Australia is under scrutiny, particularly in Randwick, where local opposition to new student accommodations has surfaced. The article highlights the broader issues faced by international students, including inadequate housing, social isolation, and lack of support from local students and government policies. The vice-chancellor of UNSW, Attila Brungs, has been implementing changes to improve conditions, but more needs to be done nationally. The author suggests integrating international students more effectively by improving their English skills and encouraging social interactions. The upcoming book by Gabby Ramia emphasizes the need for better welfare policies to support these students, drawing comparisons to more supportive systems in France and Germany. Lastly, the Sydney Morning Herald reveals a disturbing trend of virtual kidnapping scams targeting international students in Western Australia. Victims, often young and alone in a foreign country, are coerced into faking their own kidnappings to extort money from their families. A recent case involved a 17-year-old student whose family received images and videos demanding a $215,000 ransom. Police have rescued several students from these scams, which exploit their vulnerabilities and the distance from their families. WA police are collaborating with universities to educate students on protecting themselves and advising them to have contingency plans with their families to verify their safety and prevent these scams. South China Morning Post, Iran's hardline former President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has registered as a candidate for the upcoming presidential election, seeking to reclaim the nation's top political position after a tragic helicopter crash killed President Ebrahim Raisi. Ahmadinejad, who previously served from 2005 to 2013, is known for his contentious tenure, marked by his outspoken challenges to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei and his polarizing policies, including Holocaust denial and hints at nuclear ambitions. His return to the political arena comes amid escalating tensions between Iran and the West over Tehran's nuclear program and its involvement in global conflicts. Ahmadinejad promises constructive engagement and improved economic relations, but his candidacy remains uncertain as the Guardian Council which previously barred him in 2021, will decide the final list of candidates. Telegraph, Eugene Brown, a YouTube content creator, has gained a substantial following with his channel dedicated to international scholarship opportunities, guiding students on how to study abroad for free. His videos highlight fully funded scholarships like the Scottish Power Scholarship in the UK, which covers tuition, living expenses, and even flight tickets. Despite recent immigration rule changes, certain postgraduate courses, such as PhDs, still allow students to bring dependents. Platforms like FindaPhD.com list numerous funded opportunities, including prestigious programs like the Gates Cambridge Scholarships, which support dependents and cover substantial costs. These scholarships, funded by organizations like the British Council and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, aim to attract top international talent though some British students express frustration over the perceived imbalance in funding allocation. Critics argue that while these programs enhance diversity and bring global expertise to the UK, they may overlook the needs of domestic students. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making.
Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.